I'm Kathy Johnson, and this is Town Talk. I'm Father Russ Carmichael, and uh, I'm here uh, with my friend. <laughs> and I'm I'm, uh, I'm Dominic Cotton. I'm I'm a legislative advocate. And uh, I guess we're on the show to today to congratulate you on your new show, uh, Kathy Town Talk. It's really uh, it's really good to be here down in your area and to see that you're, you're doing this type of show. Of course, we do up in, uh, uh, up in New London, I do Street Talk. Uh, right. We've been on for uh, 11 years, so we do public access. We, we're great believers in public access. I think that uh, uh, it's one of the most important venues that people should use, and not enough people use it. Uh, especially for educating your local community and stuff like that. If you if you do a background, I know that our show is uh, is shown a lot of places mm -hmm. now because of uh, Dominic's work and and stuff like that. But uh, uh, the people who watch the show are usually very civic minded and people that uh, get involved in the community. And, and a lot of people don't know about public access and how important it is. And, you know, well, we, you we, we also uh, we, we, we try to incorporate um, uh, getting this on the internet, uh, Facebook, getting posts out there, um, so so the community knows uh, what we're about and, and, and what we're working towards. And um, you know, certainly uh, with with some of, with some of the political as well as the educational and the advocacy that that goes on, not just in our own communities, but really kind of statewide. Uh, and, and you know that uh, this election uh, for us, for the Democratic Party, right. uh, I mean, was uh, very, very uh, strenuous, difficult uh, yes. in, in Connecticut. I mean, we were an example for this, the, actually for the nationally, uh, the work that was done and how hard our Democrats here had to work. Our, our uh, governor, uh, who's uh, Dan Malloy, uh, wonderful, wonderful friend of ours, and, and all the people that we tried to get in office, it was a serious struggle. And, and, and to get the information out, like, Kathy, what you're doing here is, is seriously important. We really believe in that. You know? well, well, thank you, Father, and thank you, Dominic, for being here with me. And thank you for the encouragement you gave me to go forward with a, 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 a public access show. And you're right. Uh, I've um, been involved in Oxford politics for uh, several years with my husband and, and been in Oxford for, um, let's see, uh, 40 years. And I'm thinking of running for office again. Yeah, I was so once, happy about that. Thank you. Yeah. I was a former first selectman in the town. and. Um, I had to uh, not go for a second term, but I have time now. I'm retired, and I'm looking forward to once again um, serving the town if the if the voters will have me. And this this is really good. And I happen to think that one of the, one of the one of the best things, uh, okay, to get what's going on in your town is through the public access media, uh, okay? I mean, there's so many things that you can do. Uh, we, we've done our, sh our show, Street Talk is uh, informative, education-wise. We have diverse guests. Uh, Dominic is my, uh, is the co-host, and we have uh, Bonnie. I'm, I'm his Republican <laughs> liaison is what I really <laughs> am. You're the Republican <laughs> liaison. <laughs> well, well, I'm glad. My, my, my friend's severely Democratic. Oh, oh, well, then I'm glad that we have a bipartisan situation yeah, here, and no, we're no. reaching across yeah. the aisle. Yeah. I wouldn't want my Oxford uh, <laughs> citizens to think that it was one-sided. Uh, but at any rate, uh, yes, and, and uh, you know, Father, you mentioned we're, uh, we're going to have a, a whole diversity, as you have had on your show. Um, I hope that my next show will be um, on brain injury survivors and uh, uh, my advocacy with that, as I know that you and Dominic also advocate for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we both, we, we do, we're, well, basically we're in the same business. Both, both Dominic and I are uh, independent living skill trainers. I uh, have an agency. My, my daughter uh, has, has the agency, uh, and uh, I basically work for my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> and, and obviously, we, we have uh, individuals that have brain injuries. I, I, I hope, I know that you're thinking about having Elaine, uh, Elaine Burns, Burns on, yes. on, on the show. We've worked with Elaine. In fact, we did a show uh, with, with, uh, with, with Elaine and, and, uh, and her son. 
Uh, and of course, we did the show, which one of the best shows. My my people talk about it all the time. We did with you and your son Robert mm -hmm. and his artwork, That's which was which was fabulous. I hope you do that type of thing too. Well, it was gorgeous. Uh, you know, his stuff is uh, unbelievable. Well, thank you. And, and as long as you mention that, yes, uh, uh, for the, those in Oxford who don't know, Elaine Burns is the um, president of the Connecticut Brain Injury Support Network, and I'm on the board of directors. Uh, and she has a son, Ryan, who is a brain injury survivor, as my son, Robert, is. And uh, we're planning a show with the two uh, fellows on. They, they're, they're really quite a couple of characters, and I think it'll be a fun show. Uh, so, um, and, and that, but uh, Father, I wanted to ask you, um, what, what, are, what are you doing now that's most um, uh, on the top of your list as that you're focusing on at this moment? Well, uh, maybe in New London area? Oh, well, 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 in the New London area, we, we've got uh, our, our, our politics is uh, Michael Passero is the individual that is our candidate for the mayor's office down there. So. We're, we're heavily involved with uh, Michael and, and, and the group that uh, is trying to put him in office this coming. Statewide, obviously, obviously I deal with brain injury, but for us, juvenile justice, juvenile is, justice uh, yeah. is really on the table and one of the most difficult things. We, we're dealing with the juvenile sentencing, which is a cluster if there ever is one, and Dominic has been... Uh, 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 the major person again, because I am a down and dirty Boston, de old Democratic Union, basically socialist Democrat. <laughs> I well, have, honesty uh, is the best policy. Uh, you know, he 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 I'm, deals. I'm somewhere in between. He he he, he deals <laughs> with uh, a lot. Obviously, I have friends across the aisle. We have we have some. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, right you're, from you're, down you're, here, right? Your, your Senator Rob Kane, we we've had on yeah. our show before. Oh, he's, oh yeah, he's, Rob he's, Kane. Yes, he's a great friend to to, to uh, uh, the disability, disability community. Disability community, and he wonderful. Gets man. involved. Yeah, yes, he helped us with the brain injury situation yeah. Yeah, with the waiver Rob, program. Yeah. yeah, Rob's a great guy. So, you, you know, and and, uh, and and we hope to have him back on up our way. And uh, mm -hmm. you, you know, and, and and Dominic does again a, a tremendous amount of work. Uh, actually for us and for our organization that's out and, mm -hmm. and he has the ability to be able to talk to some folks far better than I get uh, animated or <laughs> well, you know, get, well, get kind well of I'm half Italian too. <laughs> <laughs> so I get, I, I'm heavy into uh, um, y you know I, 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 I somewhat aggressive and uh, and of course some people get upset but as an advocate you're always in that, uh, you're kind of always in the fighting mode. You're always in the ring. Right. You're, always, uh, you're always pushing for something. And, it, it, you know, it's an adversarial uh, type of situation. A lot of people don't understand it, but it's much like lawyers that go into the justice system and you have a defense and a mm -hmm. prosecution, and both sides really struggle and fight it out and can get nasty at times. But after you're done with the thing, you, hopefully you can go out and... Sit down. Well, it's it, Father, it's uh, and Dominic. I guess it's not for the faint of heart. Right. But you know what I wanted to ask uh, both of you about, uh, because very few people I don't I th don't think much about those in prison and, and the judicial system. Can you explain a little bit of, to the audience uh, about why you're interested in this and and what are the issues coming up with that you're fighting so hard for? Would you like to do that? Well. Most people know why I'm involved, <laughs> well, then, and I don't. Yeah. I don't want it to run off on uh, on Dominic. The reason I, I I was a very rebellious youth uh, out, out of Boston uh, when I you know some uh, fifty five some odd years ago, and I ended up uh, I ended up in prison. I was in Walpole. I I did I did in my lifetime. I did a total of seven years, about twenty years on probation and parole. Um, and uh, I was uh, I was considered organized crime uh, individual way back back then, and I come up through the Boston gang wars and all that foolishness many many years ago. Again, fifty five years ago now. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, and and I was not um, I, I was I I didn't come out of the projects. Uh, my family were. Um, 
uh, middle class, mm -hmm. you, you know, uh, and some upper middle class. I, I was grew up in Newton, Mass. Uh, so I, uh, I wasn't disadvantaged. I was, I, I was just rebellious. Mm -hmm. I was a real rebellious youth. And, and so, and I didn't go to the juvenile system. By the time I was 26, before I went, went to prison, <laughs> when I went to prison, I went with a, with a gang, a group, some 30, <laughs> some 30 of us that, uh, uh, that went. So my prison experience was very different. But when I got to prison, uh, the interesting thing about that was I had relatively, for the amount of crimes I did, I had a relatively short time against other individuals that were doing very, very serious time, a lot longer than I was doing for, uh, for nothing like I had done. I, I mean, and it was clearly discrimination. They were either people of color, mm -hmm. okay? I have an associate right now that we work with mm -hmm. that's on his 46 years. He's going to turn 64 in two weeks in prison, Ralph Hamm, uh, and uh, and no bodies. He didn't kill anybody. He was involved with a stupid thing, him and two other people. And there was a beating and there there was a rape. He was seventeen. The two other guys were older. He wasn't a he wasn't a participant in the rape, but he was uh, and so he's done uh, he's he's done forty six years of his life, okay, and he's still there and he hasn't got out. Uh, he's a writer, an author, uh, he graduated Boston University summa cum laude a couple of years ago. And so, I mean, my, uh, that's my, my interest is I left, the, I left people behind. Uh, I learned that discrimination, uh, that how much of an advantage I had over other people because I was white, because I was privileged, because I had an education. So, uh, the, basically the prison um, it gave me a career. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, it gave me, it opened my eyes, it enlightened me for the one thing, but it, it, it uh, well, in the ministry, obviously, um, I'm now father, so I went, <laughs> I went from prisoner to priest over, <laughs> over, over, over the 50 years, uh, and it wasn't an easy thing, it was well, struggling, well, so that's how I, you know, well, why i you know, I'm there. father, they say, until you've experienced some things yourself, you don't have empathy for people. Uh, I remember uh, hearing Mother Teresa say once uh, she had her nuns wash a floor on their knees because she said you'll never understand what the poor go through or what people who, who have nothing go through unless you feel some of what they've suffered. And I think that gives us more empathy. Uh, what, are you, what, what, what are you hoping to accomplish for this? How old was this young man when he uh, entered? 17. He was 17 years old. He was a uh, okay, and, and and he was the youngest of the group, and they basically the others had had done time, and so he ended up with the he ended up with the weight. But the other side of it, he's an intelligent, uh, gifted young man. He's black, and he's six. Ralph, I guess, is six six or six five. So he's a he's a you know he can present he it, when he was young present himself as a very scary individual. He was mm -hmm. you, you know you know. Uh, we're, we're hoping he comes home. We have his books. We, uh, we we publish. I have a ministry that publishes voices from from prison. A legitimate publisher that I I work with. Uh, we don't do it for money. We do it to get their voices out. Ralph has uh, several books out now. Uh, Manumission, uh, Dear Stranger, The Wayfarer, uh, and he's got Blackberry Juice that should be out by the fall. So, yeah, <coughs> so. Uh, you know, we 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 work to with him, but others. I mean, the 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 other side of it is uh, I had done unionize the prison. Mm -hmm. uh, we did the first union in the country in the seventies, uh, and 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 so we we were seriously political prisoners. All of us that were with my group, uh, and uh, a lot of them have affected the justice system mm -hmm. uh, across the nation. The problem is it has grown to where millions of people are behind bars that shouldn't be there. Well, and, I, I, and Dominic's I, learning a lot. Of Dominic's that. learning a lot. Well, I, I, I don't want to get into a deep discussion, but we see what's going on in Ferguson today. 
uh, with the um, the officer and and the we we don't know the facts really we don't know everything about it but the the whole world is watching the whole country is watching to see how this works out but getting back to Dominic here uh, uh, now what do you contribute to this Dominic <laughs> well, uh, I, I'd like to know do, do, do you have do you have a, 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 any contribution to this. Uh, well, I mean, obviously. I mean, after all, you're a Republican. <laughs> I'm actually not, not anything. <laughs> he's, he's neutral. <laughs> you can't pigeonhole me in one spot. All right, we won't do that to you, Donnie. Yeah, he's, he's, um, he's, basically, I mean, we all came together. Uh, and all got to know each other. The reason we're on this set is a little over probably about a year and a half ago. Almost two years. Now. Yeah, we, yeah. We, we got together over uh, the state wanting to change our program and, right. and dismantle it. For the brain injured, yes. Yeah, and uh, I've been involved with brain injuries, oh, for probably about um, the last 20 years um, on a multiple different levels. Um, so I knew a lot about the program. I always um, dig into things because that's just the way my mind works. So I like to go and, you know, read through policies and read through all these different things uh, because my fear was eventually what happened was they were going to come around and they were going to change this program and it wasn't for the betterment because they didn't involve any of the people that are, you know, getting receiving the services or, or the family members. Mm -hmm. You know, it was, it was to the betterment of the state. That's right. Uh, and um, uh, that's what really uh, brought us together. That's how I, I, I met I met Father. That's how, how I met you. I, I mean, obviously, we, we all That's met right. at a... Oh, we, we, we met in an interesting situation, <laughs> yes. didn't we? Yeah. Uh, when when I, I, I see that film now and I say, who's that lunatic lady that got up in the... But, but you know what? We, we were all meant to be together. We were all in that room that day mm -hmm. fighting for our, our loved ones and for those without their own voice. And... and uh, here we are. I think well, some things Dom are good. Dominic, I, gra I grabbed Dominic. W working with Dominic, I had worked, uh, well, we put together that huge amount of people that showed up the first day. And sure. Right. Prior to that, we had worked maybe four or five weeks together and stuff like that. And when I met Dominic, at, at, in fact, I met Dominic at Elaine Burns' house. And, and, uh, and, and I watched how quickly he worked and stuff like that. And we got together and we did that big thing that happened at the State House. And then we continued to work throughout the year on we that. Did. And we're still mm -hmm. working on that. We you're, are. You're still working on that. But I, I, I grabbed him because uh, uh, I, I saw a, a potential there. And people seem to say that I'm good at that. And I, I said, oh, I need him for other stuff. <laughs> and and, and uh, when we were at the State House, and uh, some friends of mine at the State House, state leadership, I won't say who they were, right? He, he had done the, uh, he had done one of the, uh, 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 he presented some issue at the, uh, at the legislative body. I forget which one it was. And the leadership, Two, actually, two people come up and said, where did you get him? He's very I, thorough. I, yes. said, yeah. I said, it doesn't matter where I got him, but he's mine. <laughs> and, and, he, and you guys ain't going to get him. I said, I got plans for him. And then, of course, we have dealt with that. And then we, he started on the justice issue. Which, which, is, which really relates to the brain injury stuff. Which, oh, exactly. Because uh, yeah. the, the full parts of this are, you know, we're talking about kids that are, are under the age of 18 when they, when they commit these crimes. The reality is um, that your connections up to your frontal lobes aren't fully developed until you're somewhere in your mid-twenties. So a lot of the people that I deal with have had frontal lobe issues. Mm -hmm. And so their judgment, their impulsiveness, um, you know, their ability to, to understand cues and how like the system works is impaired. So to me, it, it was kind of a natural move natural in, be in between the two, not from uh, the legal end of it, mm -hmm. um, because that's not particularly my forte, although you know, I, I study up on things and try to figure things out, but more from, from the argument about why we should be involved with this and, and why we're pushing for this. And really, I mean, this, these are based on Supreme Court rulings um, that state the same things. Right. And so to me, I found a natural connection between the two. So in my mind, um, I look at it from that perspective because I think for everybody, um, the justice system is difficult. 
and, and, and it's difficult when people think on both ends of it, you know, what happens, uh, you know, about the prejudice within the system, mm -hmm. and also, you know, what happens from, from a victim standpoint. Um, and so, in my mind, I, I, I really pull myself out of both ends of that and try to look specifically at, okay, well, here's the scientific reasons behind why this is, is really important. And, and that, you know, helps me to, like, you know, have my, like, end focus because everybody's going to hit on the emotional issues. Sure. Uh, on one side or the other. Um, and I think when you're dealing with politicians, certainly, you know, the passion, the emotion on, on both sides of an issue, um, you know, push people. But you got to give them facts. And this is the most important thing to us. See, from my standpoint, especially with the prisons and the juveniles and stuff like that, I don't see any distinction between what I do with the disabilities mm -hmm. versus what I do with justice. It, it seems to flow. It's always flowed for me. I always started with the in the in, in because of the prisons you have the worst of all problems, but. In prisons, you have brain injured people, mm -hmm. and 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 then you have the juvenile situation, and and, and it does it automatically flows, and and you need uh, I I always thought as an advocate, folks like Dominic that dwell into the scientific reasons. He's right in line with what the uh, the recent Supreme Court rulings are. The judges are looking into like everything the scientific factors of what's happening with the brain. And so, uh, you, you know, it was it was a, a, it's kind of a natural, a, a natural flow to what we do. Yeah. And, you know. Yeah, and I, and I see that, Father, and it's such a good mix because, I remember when when we tried to get the attention of the legislators on the ABI waiver one program mm -hmm. and the the proposal of the uh, acquired brain injury waiver two, and we were fighting not to lose our program and et cetera. It was fine for me to get up as a mother and, and raise my hand and say, you will let me speak, okay? And it was fine for, for uh, us to be advocates, but then enters Dominic, enters Dominic with, by the, we got their attention, but enters Dominic with the facts, the numbers, mm -hmm. and the comebacks for how they try. When we sat with um, uh, Commissioner Bremby that day, I was never so proud to be a member of our group <laughs> when Dominic got up there and he presented, and they came at him with every question they could and he came right back and he had done his homework. There, So I can see that. Now, why you picked me to come along with you, I, I never know. <laughs> well, because you're a lot like I am, the yeah, passion. I am. I am. Uh, the, the, the passion. Now, I, I never, as you know, that you didn't find out, I, I never, uh, I, I very rarely uh, front, uh, 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 put out that I'm also a parent of uh, brain injured no, individuals. No, you never said I that. Never, I never told anybody that. And, and Bill said, I asked me, he said, you know, I said, because, because of the kind of heavy advocate I am, I said, I just, uh, you know, obviously did self-interest too. Right. I said that my, my son is a veteran and my son is in the hospital in Louisiana, or again, a brain injured individual. Uh, I, I said, but I, because of I do so much with so many, uh, I just, you know, I, I leave that stuff, uh, I, I leave that stuff behind. Because the, the, my focus is really trying to get more people like you, um, like Elaine, the more people that we have that have a direct self-interest in doing what we do, the better off we, we are. So, so my, 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 my belief is always, well, like the show, mm -hmm. like you doing the show. Mm -hmm. This yes. is very important. This, this, is, this is seeding. Okay, you, 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 you're informing people, and it doesn't matter. See, to me, uh, I, I say it all the time, you can, with six people, you can change, you can the, change world. the world, okay, as long as you don't try to take the credit, yeah. okay? So, and what your job becomes is to try to get other people involved, get them involved in their, in their self-interest because that, you, you know, and you educate. Uh, uh, public and 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 that's what and that's what has to happen, and this is what happens again. Public access to me is one of the most important avenues. I've used public access since the 70s uh, in Boston and stuff like that. 
with the prison movement it was the first uh, my first contact with public access and we developed a pretty heavy political mm -hmm. group not only in Massachusetts but throughout New England uh, by the use of the media by getting family members involved. Family members of prisoners didn't want to get involved. Nobody wants to say, my kid's in trouble in, in or, jail, uh, yeah. a jail and stuff like that. Every, my own mother, God bless her, she tried to shut me down more than once, uh, okay, because of the stigmatization of, hey, you had a son who was a nutbag, and, and, I, and I did all these stupid things. This is when I started to really change and stuff like that, because I used to get a lot of publicity. And she, you know, used to try and say, you need to shut up, <laughs> God bless her, and, and, and everything else. It, it, you know, because the fact of the matter is, when you have three million people behind bars, which we do, mostly of color, they all have family members, and those yeah. family members vote. And they need to learn that you need to vote and you need to be powerful, and the only way you're going to change anything is through the vote. And if you yes. don't vote, yes. you, you, it, the voting's like money. Yeah, uh, okay. I, I, poor people have no power. They have no power. They have no representation. The only real power they have is the vote. And they need to learn that that vote is important. And if you get some, if you got one vote, you're important. You get two, three, four. You get ten people to vote with you. Now you're starting to get power. And that, that's kind of my... You know, my mantra is you need to vote, you need to get involved. Now, you'll have a show out here and you're going to have your enemies watching your show. Oh, well, uh, I, well even that, in that, Little Oxford, you know, we I, have I, our enemies. I, I know, <laughs> but that's okay because that, uh, that's, they engage and you want your and community no engaged and, that, and that's what it's all and, about. And, and Father, you know, and that's right, what, what you said, Father, uh, about uh, voting. That as I see it, is probably the a number one thing we should should happen. But they have said someone very important said in, in history was it Cicero maybe he said um, uh, you know to control the people give them bread in a circus. <laughs> well, the problem is we're watching the circus too much and we're not actually going to the table and putting our bread on the table what oh. we want. Oh. And and you said something too. I want to segue on this. You said something about not taking the credit, you know, doing something and, and, and but not taking the credit, six people can get that done. I think that's wrong with our politicians today, me being a politician myself in some ways. It's it's very, politicians always want to take oh, the credit. Oh, they want the credit. They always want they, the credit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and, and to get their attention, you know what you and I and Dominic had to do to uh, uh, beat them up up in Hartford to oh, just get that's... five minutes of attention. That's right. Because the first thing they want to do is pat you on the head and tell you to go away. Go away. And if, and if you're <laughs> nice and you go with your hat in your hand and you're very uh, uh, accommodating, well, you look good. You look good on film mm -hmm. and you look good at what you're doing, but you're not going to accomplish what you want. Oh. But once we got to the table and we had this gentleman here, it was amazing. Dom Dominic, tell, how do you, in fact, sit over all that, that information and soak it up like a sponge the way you do? Uh, with the brain injury stuff, it was pretty easy. I started reading, reading about the program because um, I was an advocate to begin with uh, well, when, I, when this program right. first started out. Right. right. Um, and I was fortunate enough uh, to have, spend a lot of time with the person who actually wrote the program. So to understand everything that went into it, that's just, if you're, if you're going to help somebody in any capacity, you have to understand how the whole system works. And, um, you know, from that, I, have, I also have a master's in healthcare administration, so I understand policy. Sure. Um, you know, I, under, I understand, you know, legislatively uh, how policy changes and everything yeah. else along those lines. So, and I'm good at um, picking out the little pieces of information that are, that are, that are important. So I can comb through, through a budget yeah. and sure. I can say, okay, yeah, here's, here's, what, here's what I need to know. And then it's, it's, it's like putting a pieces of a puzzle together and all of a sudden... Yeah. Uh, it, it it comes, except it's sometimes it's not building like it from the outside that a lot of people look at it. it it's almost like starting right in the middle and like working, and your, working way your way out, out. Yeah. and around. What, what do you think, Dominic, uh, about the fact that um, we had we asked for this much, 
and we fought this much, mm -hmm. and we got from the legislators this much. I mean, it's, it's a real tough battle because they have an agenda that they want to stick to, too. Uh, and I know when we sat with the commissioner, he used a lot of your numbers for his own knowledge, too, and all. We did get, explain how far we got with that and where we are at the moment. Well, I mean, I, I have to back it up uh, one piece. Uh, Go ahead. Which was, um, you were the one who actually got a, a meeting with uh, Michael, and I forget his last name, so the, the governor's chief of staff. Oh, yes. Back, back, in, <laughs> back, back, in, back, back on, in October. May I interrupt you? Do you know how I finally got it? My second letter, I finally said, listen, I've been a former first selectman. I've, I, I, I've, I've been chair of the Democrat Party. I've worked hard for the Democrats. <laughs> Uh, what is this? I've sat next to Governor Malloy, heard his stump speech three times, and, and now I, I can't get to see the governor over brain injury. I'd have an easier time having an Elvis sighting. And the next day, I got the note that said, the chief of staff will see us. I didn't get the governor, but I got the chief of staff. Um, but I think the, way, the best way that I can explain it is, um, was something that his, his uh, chief financial person, Ben Barnes, said. It's... it's it's easier um, to not give somebody new uh, what people have had in the past. So if you try to take something away from somebody that they already have, mm -hmm. they're going to fight you tooth and nail, which is what we did. Um, versus if a person... Um, We're going to have to wrap it up in a minute, but go ahead, Dominic. Finish your thought. If a person, rather than whether a person doesn't have something in the first place. So I think that's what was different in, in this was they wanted to change the system. They were going to save a lot of money. And uh, what we ended up with was not changing around our program. Okay, thank you, Dominic. Are we going for a break? or No, are we no I think so. We're still going on, we're right? I, I love, I, I see, I love, I love these shows because <laughs> so, some, sometimes we don't show how professional we are. We're, well, we're, yes. st we're still going on, yeah. and it's keep, all right. Keep in so mind. we keep on moving along. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Keep but, in mind that this is our uh, first show. Well, <laughs> for I, me, I, anyway, right. for me. 11 years, I still do this stuff, uh, okay? I, uh, uh, and, and I'm so lucky. Where I am in New London, I have Mary Jane Ricard that sits behind the thing and, and, and gets me through or sometimes breaks in and you, I'm on my shows <laughs> Be, because, right. because obviously we got people in the booth that are really doing the job uh, for us and making us look good on uh, out here so yeah. you know that just that just happens so let me ask your advice father being you're an old uh, trooper at this do they want us to uh, Wrap up our final no, statements. No, no, no. I think we're okay. I think we're, we're okay. We're, we're, okay. We're, we're, we're traveling on. That's we're the, traveling on. Uh, so yeah. I want to go back to Dominic. So, then so, and, so, and so let him finish what, what, what they wanted to do. I mean, realistically, um, they had a Demas population that they were paying a hundred percent of their services. Explain for. Demas. Department of Mental Health and Addiction Services, and okay. they had a population that's mixed. They're brain injured. And they have and, and they have mental health and disorders, mental and they health. had the mental health disorder before they had the brain injury. So that that it's a different population. They were they have different requirements for how to work with them. Um, not so drastically different, but um, sometimes they need more substantial services for some people. And um, they were looking to transfer these people on our program. Mm -hmm. uh, the only difference was. Um, they wanted to limit the cost of these people's program and they would also be jumping over a, a whole bunch of people that were waiting for services. So what they tried to do the first time around was change our program to meet what their needs were. And when they realized that they couldn't do that, then you had the meeting uh, with, with the governor's chief of staff. Yes. And he told you that, you know, we were changing uh, the limits. So instead of our program, which is you can be 200% of what your cost of care would be if you were in an institution, they told you 125. Mm -hmm. Yes, they did. Um, and after that, we continued to hammer away. We, we eventually got to 150. I think we would have probably been satisfied at, at, at 175. What they decided to do was to say, okay, let's take this away from you. So this is your child. You're worried about what, what you're doing with his program. Okay. That's one program. We're going to leave it be. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to open up this whole other program, 
except it has these limitations. And the difficulty that they had um, from state policy-wide was nobody really else had above 150. So what they were trying to do was they were trying to bring this program back down to 150 mm -hmm. rather than if they left it at 200 percent, everybody else would have had to be brought up to that because of um, issues that were going on through the court, going which we found out about yeah, later. Yeah, the, the other side of that was they had a mandate from the court that nobody understood. Okay, the Justice Department said you better be doing this or you're going to be in violation of the law. So we were operating almost in a vacuum yeah. mm -hmm. because nobody understood. Now, there was a couple of people that understood. Actually, your, your, your senator, uh, uh, Gail, Gail Slosberg, uh, yeah. uh, w w was right on. She's an attorney and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Then when I, when I heard about that, uh, okay, I happened, to, I happened to get in and went, oh, my God. I said, he, so we, we were lucky to get anything. Right. Uh, okay, in the end, and a lot of people didn't understand that. Like, I mean, we had our own people uh, going nuts because they said, oh, we were here to get this and get that. And we're trying to say, look, you're not going to get this or get that because there's a justice mandate that's coming down, and they have to, uh, okay, the state is going to follow the law. And it's similar to what we're going through with the, yeah. with the juvenile thing. This has been a Supreme Court ruling to Miller and Graham, and, 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 and whether the state likes it or whether the state doesn't, you have to follow the Supreme Court ruling. Right. Otherwise, all your population and then can challenge, and we're, we're talking a lot of suits, a lot of lawsuits that cost the taxpayers money from prisoners and advocates that say no you you can't do these to these because the Supreme Court says you've got to do something else so kind of we were basically in that kind of a, a, right. a, a situation and and and, uh, uh, and and again we were very fortunate throughout the, the whole process to have Dominic with us to help explain because they they needed to they needed to jump around and find out the best way they could get out of this with mm -hmm. the most effective uh, people getting served, with, with cost factors that were, were were reasonable, and of course, in all our meetings, he went in there and there there. I, I mean, I, I I was ashamed to watch an operation where, and I'm sure the commissioner was himself, where his own administrators couldn't stand up to Dominic. Oh, I know. At one time, he had nine people on the other side trying to tell him that he was wrong, and uh, they were wrong. I mean, so when you're paying nine people at the fact the, the kind of money they were getting, I mean, that, was, uh, that had to be a serious embarrassment to the commissioner. And if the governor had known at that particular time, I think he would have fired all those people. I know I would have. Well, <laughs> well, you know, it's funny you said that because that day at the table uh, in, in um, uh, uh, the, the, um, Mr. Bremby's uh, staff and all, when, when mm -hmm. we were at the table there in Hartford, uh, I saw the jaws drop. I, I, as soon as Dominic started to talk, I said, we now have great credibility. Not only did we make the noise, but now we have the credibility. And of course, I have to say, Elaine Burns contributed an awful lot at the table mm -hmm. that day, too. She was working very closely with Dominic on all of these issues. All the issues, <clears throat> yes, she was. And uh, she's a good leader for um, uh, the Connecticut Brain Injury Support Network. And, and so I think the theme I see here is that and I, and I worry about the person who is just trying to get by and keep their um, social security or keep mm -hmm. their disability or whatever. When, when people like us sit at a table with the people who are in the know, and then I know through with my son who has um, the, the, the uh, social security and that, when you talk to someone on that level, the state level, they'll give you a canned answer. And they expect you to walk away and accept that answer. And many people do. And they, mm -hmm. they, they lose benefits and things that they should have had. They take their word for it. But it comes down that way. If someone said it, then you say it to someone. You have to really dig into it. What, well, do you, what say you, Father? Well, it, the, other, the other side of it, sometimes the people you go to don't even know what they're doing. That's and, true. Okay, And that's the problem. Mm. They themselves are not... Uh, are not studious enough to know what 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 they what they're dealing with, and and we saw that. I mean, that right. that that was that was demonstrated in what happened. That we had people sitting across the table getting paid for jobs, uh, okay, that they were supposed to know, and they didn't know. 
Yeah. They didn't know. I mean, oh, I, I had to, I had to argue. Told, I, I had mean, to argue with my senator about this. She oh, called me up and she's oh, like, "No, God. these are the numbers they're giving oh, me." Oh yeah, yeah. And I'm like, "They're not." They were I the said wrong they're wrong. Ones. They were wrong. And Th this is why, you know, people talk about Ronald Reagan, who was uh, was a was a very c good communicator and all, mm -hmm. but he had enough brains to surround himself with the right people, like Dominic and whatever. Th very rarely do you have an individual who can do both. Who are have what Dominic does and have what 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 others can communicate. When you get that together, it, it, it's a stone wall. Well, that's, you know, that 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 again is an administrative problem. That 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 is leadership. I mean that that that's again right. is, is what we were talking about. You you whoever's leading the group or whoever the chief officer or whatever you wanted to that individual. You you can have yes people around you. You sound good. I mean, I got a mayor right now in uh, New London that thinks he's uh, he's the greatest thing that walked on water. And the fact of the matter is, is because he hired incompetent people that are not schooled. Okay, okay. and he, basically he's we've got a death in uh, uh, that was basically hit his administrator's fault for not having the proper people in there that that that, that he's going to have to live with. Uh, you you can do that, and you make you know everybody says you're 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 a great person. Or you can have people around you that will challenge you, mm -hmm. uh, that will fight with you, that mm -hmm. will uh, that 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 know their business. And and as a leader, I my belief is that what you need is you need people who are, know at least what you do and better, and in their expertise know know what they're doing. I I, I, I again. People ask me, Dominic's one of the best explanations of Bonnie that I have. All the people that I have around me are far more educated than I am in their specific fields, and they do their work and they know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Dominic communicates far better than I do in a certain in a certain way, uh, okay, and 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 uh, and. and and he can communicate with what I need to say to other people, and he needs to, you know, where I can't do it. I, you got to know your limitations and who you got around you, and 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 that's that's key to any business. It well, doesn't matter what the business is. Well, what I what I would like to say, and I know I'll, I'll give it to you, David, is when I was first selectman in Oxford in 2001 to 2003, the first thing we were hit with on my first day of office was. Otley Lundgren, who contracted the anthrax from her mm -hmm. mailbox, 94-year-old yeah. woman, yeah. and um, uh, what what I realized early on was that you really had to depend on the people around you too, mm -hmm. but you had to be wise enough to keep your eyes open uh, because really things if you don't have the right people. You could have someone come back to you and say, "Well, wait a minute. You you drop the you end up the buck stops on your desk." Well, and, and, and 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 that's uh, you know. Exactly, exactly right. If you hire incompetent people, it's your fault. Well, I had <laughs> I had the opportunity yeah, 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 yeah. to have Beverly Hanna, uh -huh. who was the administrative assistant. I left her there. She was with the Republicans. She was excellent. And I had Carl Cirrus, who had been in the town hall. For many, many years, Carl had been um, the finance director and many times acted like the administrative assistant. He even emptied go uh, the waste paper b bags if he had to. Yeah, right. And, and uh, uh, they were very supportive of me, and I recognized in both of them that they were very, very smart, and they knew what they were doing, and I was in good hands that way, and then I just led the town. But, Dominic, I see you had something to say, and once I, was, I get I talking, say, I can't stop. So. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I think when you talk about leadership, leadership is there to set uh, the culture or, 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 or the tone of the organization yes. and, 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 the, and, the, and the direction of the, right. or, of the organization. And, it, and if you're a smart leader and, and you're, you're self-secure, you surround yourself with good people yes. because they'll be the ones to help you get it done because no one person can do everything. They no, can't. No. And um, the other thing I was going to say, you, you know, last week uh, was my first opportunity. Fa Father took a day off, and I actually got to, to run the show by myself. And you talk about partnerships and, and what you truly enjoy, like when you when you're working with somebody, and, and that is part of my joy. Is I like to do this because I work with people. Um, and then, <laughs> go ahead. Uh, um, is you know, I missed. 
that passion. I can I can explain things, um, but I, I, I'm I'm certainly not going to get it out in the, in the same way that Father does, or right, right. In, in, invoke that in. And you too, uh, you well, you you know you're you're the same way. I mean, we we went up in front of, of the governor, uh, you know, uh, twice at, at his town hall meetings. And oh, it yeah. is, it we is that passion that, that gets things going. Do you remember when I said, and here comes Father Carmichael? I said to, I said to the governor, and, and, and if you want a better explanation, uh, at, oh, I said, ask Father Carmichael. You didn't, yeah, yeah, you didn't even know I was in the I didn't even know. I said, you can ask Father Carmichael. And, in, and he, all, he's walking in, and I don't even know it. Oh, that, was, that, that was a riot but, at um, that time. Yeah. But it, but again, it's the different personalities, the different styles, and in, 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 in what you do. The other thing is not being afraid to work with people who have egos. I have a big ego and stuff like that. You you can't be afraid to go out when people have a quality and, and, and are doing the type of things. We you can't be afraid not to work with them. Uh, you, you can't. And again, that becomes. Uh, about credit. If you're worried about credit, you might you might worry about who's around you or mm -hmm. who's going to get the credit and stuff like that. That gets back to that. If, if that's if that's what you're worried about in the advocacy business and the kind of stuff, with, it's the wrong thing. You ma you're making a you're making a mistake. If you really want to change things, and, and we've been fortunate, I have been fortunate over many years to have changed and done many, many things, and it's the people who I had around me. That's it, right. I, you, you know, I was fortunate to be involved with it, don't let alone lead it. It was to be involved with it and be involved with the people that wanted to change those type of things. Everything, uh, well, good example is the homeless. We founded the homeless uh, the shelter and, 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 and a couple of food programs in 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 uh, in New London. Well, that it w when it got taken up, it takes a change. It changes. It's not. It doesn't stay the same way that say I wanted to. Father Emmett, God bless him, has passed on. That him and I did things a certain way, and the other group takes over, and it, it, the service is still going on. Right. The people are getting taken care of, but it takes on a different. It, it you know yeah, it take, yeah. take, takes on a different style a different tone That's is what right. you're saying and you you can't you you got to be saying hey wow you know that's that's the baby. See you later. Now it's uh, now it's, it's theirs, and you, you know when you, you go you, on you with go it. On. And, and, right. and thank God I was able to be part of those things, and and that's that's the same with what we do. I mean, and you're down here. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, I'm, I'm going to be looking at your show as uh, uh, as uh, we planted a seed. You're doing it, and uh, and, 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 and that's yes, great. And, and, you and know? talk about the seed. Well, we're going to have to wrap it up. We have only a few more minutes, but and we can each say something. But I would say yes, Father, and and he, Father, has planted to see the seed here. Uh, I'm not in me. I'm not a very little seed. I'm quite a good size <laughs> seed here, but uh, uh, he's planted this seed here. And so we we branch out. So we get our word out. We get we get through uh, and have nice conversations here. I I hope in the future things that people are interested in hearing, uh, and and doing. And what and I'm going to go to Dominic. Dominic, is there something you'd like to say before we have to wind this up? Um, I mean, to me, I look at advocacy. Uh, if you're doing it well, it's it's how effective you are. Yeah. And, yeah. and and you know what this is this is another vehicle for for getting that and getting people's attention and obviously getting them involved and you know certainly politicians like to be on TV and and this is a good opportunity for you to be able to you know understand where they're coming from and have them understand where you're coming from so it's 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 as well as to educate the public and everything else so well, it's, it's a great it's a great medium and and everything else for exposure and ideas and, and, and what's happening in your community I, I mean I know that you you've uh, uh, you're, you're thinking about the diversity in your community mm -hmm. it isn't just about politics no uh, okay mm -hmm. I mean you, you uh, obviously you're gonna do the brain you're talking about doing the brain injury thing which which exposes people to to what we deal with as families and stuff like that. I know that you were talking about other things in the community, maybe business people right. you bring in and show what's going on in your community. Uh, you, you know, this is what we do up there. Maybe we take a little story. Somebody might be doing a magazine or something, something new, street talk. 
br brings them in, exposes them to, uh, to you know, exposes the community, those people that are watching us. And again, I always say, one of the things about public access, when you develop your, your, your the people and you're watching, the people who watch you are going to be activists. Mm -hmm. Almost, all, they're going to be actors. It's a different. It's not like the guy that watches uh, some program on regular TV that's going to lay Duck Dynasty. Yeah. <laughs> no, the people who watch Public Access are the people who are uh, uh, are, are, are activists. They're going to they're going to do what you. If you're talking about getting them out to vote and getting them involved, that that that's the kind of person. It's civic-minded people that watch public access, so I, I, that's what's going to happen. I, and, and Father, I think you're right on that. And um, what I would like to say to uh, my listeners, if anybody's listening right now, uh, <laughs> is that um, uh, I was very pleased to have Father, and I was very pleased to have uh, Dominic here, Father Russ and, and Dominic. Uh, that's Father Russ Carmichael. and. Dominic Cotton here with me today uh, to support me on this first show. And Father's correct, uh, I intend to have a diversity of not just political issues, mm -hmm. but artists in town. Uh, I'm hoping maybe I can get people who are educators to talk about education and things like that. And yes, let me be honest and admit to you that when you are looking to enter the political arena, you really are marketing yourself to the public. The public is either going to like you, like your ideas, and like what they see. And all I can say is I hope that when you see my show, you get to know me a little better, get to know who I am. And, and those that knew me years ago in town uh, and knew me how I, how I was in the town hall, I don't like making people nervous. I don't like running a straw boss mentality. I like listening to people criticize me, tell me what I didn't do right. And believe me, you haven't lived until you've been in a room. We have a town meeting form of government in Oxford. <laughs> and you haven't yeah. lived till you've had 100 angry citizens shaking their fist at you and telling you that you should just take a hike. <laughs> if you can't take that, you can't be there. And uh, Yeah, but I, that's what gets you involved, too. That's, you it, but it's exciting it's and it's passionate. It's and passionate, the, you know? The one thing I, I say is this. Ego, power, and money are the great, great destroyers of anything. When you are in the public eye, don't believe all the bad things, don't believe all the good things. Somewhere in the middle is the truth. And uh, don't let it go to your head. And, re and the last thing you want is people who tell you that you're dressed in beautiful mink and robes when really you're walking around naked. <laughs> you just don't want that. Those are not the kind of people you she want. I respect no the people that That's come right. right out and tell me. That's why I've connected with Father, and, uh, and, and that's why we've kind of, we're kind of alike. I mean, I mean if, when you're an advocate and a politician, it's almost two different things, and so I balance the both of them. Uh, I, I don't know what else to say tonight. I've said enough. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think so. Well, thank you for. Uh, it was really nice being yeah. on your show. Uh, and, and, and Kathy, we don't. Down. We don't just like you. We love you. We love you. We love you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly we love right. you. Oh, and, <laughs> and don't be surprised if I, if you turn on TV one day and I'm marching with a sign with Father <laughs> in Boston somewhere. In Boston somewhere. <laughs> somewhere. That's right. Well, that, yeah. that's all, and uh, I want to say goodbye to everyone. Can I say goodbye? This is my new show, so. Well, yeah, you, I, I think you're okay. I, I think I'm okay. I think you're okay. They, yeah, I, if you got a uh, sit situation, they, they can run their... Uh, uh, the credits. The credits yeah. and stuff we like that. We can run that. the credits, and, I'll, and yeah. I'll sign out now and say goodbye. Mm -hmm.